Welcome to another edition of What Barry's Talking About from Barry 360. I'm Dan Blakely. On this week's program, Barry's Budget. City Council was able to hold the line, but some of its service partners were not. What does that mean, and what is the city doing with your tax dollars? Barry Police waving a red flag over people publishing images and video of crimes on social media. What you think may be helping may actually be hindering the investigation and putting you in danger. Barry Colt still in the OHL playoff hunt. We get our weekly update. And Innisfil Idea Lab and Library is putting together a special fundraising event. It's first. We've got the details. The conversation starts after this. There's a tremendous urge these days to post anything and everything to social media. We've talked before about posting vacation videos while you're still on vacation, which can tip off would-be robbers that you're not home. More recently, we've seen security video of attempted home break-ins, not in progress, but after the fact being posted, which may seem like a good idea in terms of tracking down the culprits, but Barrie Police Communications Coordinator Peter Leon says you may be doing yourself a huge disservice. I can appreciate the public's concern when things like this happen in a neighborhood and specifically to a homeowner or a person who is living at a residence when something like this happens. You want to be involved. That's the job of the police. It's our job to receive the call. It's our job to investigate and utilize whatever resources we deem necessary to identify persons that are responsible and hold them accountable for their actions. By posting videos and still pictures on social media of ongoing police investigations, you have the potential to compromise the integrity of the work that has been done or is yet to be done. And it can very much have a negative impact on any potential court proceedings that are could take place in the future. So we would recommend strongly, obviously share the information that you have with the police because that is a resource and a tool that will help us. But please consider what you're doing before you post it. Once you post it, you can't take it back. We know the rules of social media. That's probably the only rule that does exist. And once it's out there, it's out there. And you're uh, gonna see comments from people that may support you, that certainly don't support you. And when you you see videos like that, uh, there's a lot of information that you are exposing to the world to see, uh, and it may not be in your best interest. That incident remains on under investigation. Uh, we're just very fortunate that there was nobody seriously injured when a firearm was discharged at that door that we all saw that hand coming through the window trying to unlock. I think of so- things as simple as, and I know police were uh, issuing warnings at Christmas time about putting big boxes out for the trash, showing huge screen TVs and other electronics and you're just alerting people to what you have in the house. And that's on a smaller scale than this, but the same kind of logic prevails. You're passing out a whole lot of information that seems like it's a good idea at the time, but when you step back and think about it, what have I done? Well, I think, you know, we we need to be careful in our world today because there are people that are driving through our neighborhoods looking for vehicles that are available to them. We, we don't need to go into detail there. We all know the vehicles that are being highly sought after in our neighborhoods. Uh, when you put out large boxes, especially during the holiday season, yes, you are displaying to the world what you may have received. Take the time, cut the box down into size uh, so that it can go out properly and it doesn't attract too much attention. Uh, these are little things that you can do to protect what is yours Um, But I think we're in a world now where we have to go one step further and uh, we need to, you know, think about surveillance cameras. We need to think about how do we protect our homes, exterior lighting. I leave mine on all night long, turn it off when I get up and it's daylight. You know what, if you can eliminate the shadows, you could possibly eliminate your home from becoming a target of a criminal. Thanks for coming in and sharing advice about uh, use of social media too. Appreciate it, Peter. And we appreciate the opportunity to, to speak to the community.
Barry City Council was expected to finalize this year's budget at last night's meeting. The tax increase was sitting at just over 4% going into the meeting. That increased the result of outside factors such as what the County of Simcoe needs from the city as well as police, the health unit and the library for instance. There was no increase on the city portion of the budget. Barry 360's Ian McLennan gets an inside look at the number crunching and what's in the budget from Mayor Alex Nuttall. You ran on a campaign back a couple of years ago that it would be zero, the city portion. You accomplished that last year. You did it again this year. Why is that zero so important? I think it's really important for, that the city at this point, when affordability is such a critical issue, that we show that we're mining our sense, that we are uh, ensuring that every dollar that is spent is done so uh, in a prudent manner. And for the city of Barrie, we have been able to accomplish two years in a row zero uh, percent increases to city operations. At the same time, we have uh, invested this year in terms of a two percent uh, increase into our infrastructure renewal reserve that will fix the roads. Uh, it will invest in infrastructure, things like Brine Drive, and ensure that uh, all of our uh, our roads, sewers, our pipes are are uh, you know being in a in, in a in a well kept uh, shape. And that, uh, that infrastructure investment fund, it's 2% over the next three years, is that correct? So there's uh, 2% that we've approved for three years, and we were 1% last year. And unfortunately, uh, in the past, what we've seen is the city operations has been climbing uh, quite, a lo- quite a lot, but we weren't investing in infrastructure the right way. So what we've done is we've limited those city operations. That's, uh, you know, uh, employees of the city of Barrie, that is uh, the lights uh, being kept on. It's all of the operating items of the city. And at the same time, we're now investing in fixing the city up and ensuring that it's in the shape that, you know, people would expect it to be. And those city services, we're talking snow clearing, roads, parks, transit, water treatment, et cetera. Um, I think it was last year, Councillor Amy Corser said there's an obsession with zero, and she expressed concern about long-term hits on service levels. And is that a, is that a fair comment um, when we focus on zero that eventually we're going to have to pay the piper? Well, I think it's important to uh, to really look into the city's finances, and and anyone who understands the city's finances will know that a zero percent increase is not a zero percent increase in the sense that there was six million dollars in new uh, taxation that was hitting the city's operating uh, budget this year. Uh, that means that uh, you know you see a considerable uh, amount of money available to be able to cover any of the increase in costs, like staffing, like fuel costs, like uh, you know the inflation hitting any materials that we uh, would be purchasing the city of Barrie. And so even though we're able to hold it to a 0%, uh, we still do have new revenues coming in to be able to make the city's budget work. So, uh, you know, anyone who's able to do their homework would uh, would be able to see that uh, and know that uh, we just don't believe that there should be natural tax increases because that's what people expect. I think people should expect a zero. And then if there's something that we need to increase taxes for in order to cover, uh, we should be substantiating that to the public uh, and helping them understand why we have to go in a specific direction. Now, your service partners, the county, uh, Barry Police, Conservation Authority, Health Unit, there's the b- library, there's a number of them. They're not held to the same zero percent. Would you like them to be? Let's talk about Barry Police. It's uh, The budget went up, uh, I think, 6.78%. $4.3 million more. Um, that's been the norm year after year. Is there a way to hold the line or because we're a growing city, there's that need? Well, I think when uh, you look at the police budget, they don't receive a piece of that increasing uh, that in- increasing tax revenue. So um, when, when I look at it, I go, what are we getting for this? Like, wh- how is this improving the lives of people around the city? How are we encouraging public safety? How are we ensuring we have a safe community? And uh, seeing six new police officers coming online in 2024, I think is a a major step forward. Uh, We had the move of the harm unit to downtown because of uh, the increasing issues we'd been facing there. Uh, We had two new officers deployed downtown. And at the same time, the police service has been able to listen to what we asked of them last year at budget time, where we were saying we want to see more officers on the ground and we want to see less at the in the upper echelons of the organization. 
We're now down to one deputy instead of two in terms of the police service, and those dollars have been reinvested in officers on the front line. I think that's an example of an organization that uh, understands where the city's trying to go in terms of value for dollar for people uh, out in the community and being able to be held accountable for every dollar uh, that they have been, you know, given the responsibility of managing. Now, 97, I think, what, 98% of salaries and benefits. There's a new uh, contract that has been approved by the by the service. Um whether it's Barry, whether it's Toronto, the police always seems to come on the radar. Um, but you, the city council did send Barry police back with some homework to do um, with a deadline in terms of uh, wh- where they want to be. And can you maybe explain a bit of that? Well, yeah, first of all, I, I don't want to focus on just on the Barry police. We sent every organization uh, with homework. I think that the idea that an organization can, um, you know, come to city council every year, hands out, but not provide all of the information related to how those dollars are spent or where dollars are moved between accounts, I think is unreasonable. So uh, we need to make sure that every dollar that's being entrusted to us, that as we pass it on to other organizations like Barry Police, the Public Library, the Conservation Authorities, the County of Simcoe, uh, the Health Unit, AOL, Uh, those organizations are reporting back with, here's what our targets are, here's what our goals are, here's how we're uh, working towards achieving them, here's what we've achieved so far, and uh, this is what the five-year plan looks like. So you want proof in the pudding as a, and for the bang for the buck? Well, yeah, I think that it's important that we measure it. You know, we measure success and failure everywhere. And if you don't measure success and failure, you never really know if you're going in the right direction. And so I think it's really important. We understand there's going to be failures. Uh, but if you're not measuring it and you're not understanding why the failures have happened, then we're not going to be moving towards success in the future. The county of Simcoe. Um, uh, they believe it was a four, 12.8% increase ask. Um, or I think it's about 16 total. Yes. If so we're, we're talking again, millions again, um, for people who aren't familiar, uh, they hear a lot about the County. What are the, what is the service delivery that the County provides that includes cities like Barrie and Aurelia? Well, for the city of Barrie, uh, the, the one I think people would see the most, uh, would be the ambulance service, uh, long-term care as well. Uh, social services. And so, you know, when you look across uh, the different items that the county uh, provides for the city, they're very difficult ones, to be honest. They're, uh, you know, when you're considering things like ambulance service, paramedic services, uh, the demand is so great today. As you know, if you think about uh, the the emergency we're facing in terms of fentanyl and drugs, like it has a, a large impact on that organization and, and on the services they provide for the city of Barrie. But what can Barry, could Barry do better? And are you looking at, uh, in terms of service delivery, if maybe Barry should take back what, what, what was taken away? Well, I think this year is a unique opportunity to uh, look into all of those questions. Um, you know, it's a negotiating year between the city and the county. Uh, we need to understand whether uh, the county is able to achieve the things that uh, the city would expect in terms of uh, social services and paramedics and and long-term care. Um, And I think that's a conversation that we will continue to have. Uh, But, uh, you know, I'm I'm in no rush to uh, turn anything upside down if I think that there's a path to uh, that organization being able to to achieve the the goals and vision that we've set out for the city of Barrie. And finally, um, people comment they want, there's there's too much road construction or not enough. Um, you know, whether it's rec centers, we need one, we, we know what's, the, what's going to go down the road in the, in the south end of the city. Um, how do you find that as mayor and a council to balance the demands that people want? Um, some don't realize, well, you have to pay for it too. How, how challenging is that when you, know, when, you, when you get together with your departments and, and bang heads? Well, I think for the city of Barrie, uh, we we're in a very unique situation. We've got a lot of housing happening. We've had some very good growth on our industrial lands, and that's uh, seeding new new dollars and cents to the city's budgets. I we reckon probably the 2027, 28 years will be where we start to really uh, feel like, hey, where are we finding these new revenues from? Because you see a slowdown in the housing and, and, and jobs in the sense we have no employment land left. And then the housing side, uh, we know what's happening in the market. So, you know, as I'm looking that far out, I think that uh, there's uh, there's some issues there. Um, but but right now, I think everyone's been able to work together. We've been able to trim the budgets where they need to be trimmed, and we've been able to come back to uh, to the people with a with a reasonable budget. When it comes to 
to the amount of work that's being done on the streets fixing the roads. You know, that was a bit of euphemism for me during the election, fix the roads, and it means fix the roads. I meant that. That's why there's so many roads being fixed. But it also means make sure that we have adequate infrastructure. It means that we need to have rec centers in place. We need to make sure that our, our libraries are accessible to people. You know, when you think about all of these uh, all of these items on the infrastructure side that re- weren't moving down the line. The, the yardsticks were stuck. Uh, the Southeast Rec Center was approved when I was a city councilor in Ward 10 in my first term uh, prior to 2010. And it we haven't, we haven't even got the land, let alone broken ground. That's not good enough. We need to make sure that we're investing in those services. We've got a budget set aside for it now, and I think it'll be a fantastic institution that's in place in the Southeast part of the city uh, once, once we get it built. What Barry's Talking About is a weekly podcast featuring the best Barry and Simcoe County have to offer and more. We've covered a lot of ground since we began last summer. You can get caught up and make it easy to keep up in the future by subscribing to What Barry's Talking About through any podcast distributor. Still to come on What Barry's Talking About, the Barry Colts quest for a playoff spot and the Innisfil Idea Lab and Library is hoping to spark some interest with a special event it calls Spark. Now this. It's cool to care. It's a well-known fact blood transfusion saves lives. It's also a well-known fact that the world relies on voluntary unpaid donations to fill the need for blood. The need for blood never ends. Canadian Blood Services in Barrie is calling on you to help save a life. Please consider donating today. Appointments are mandatory and must be booked in advance. Book today at blood.ca through the Give Blood app or by calling one 888 donate Cool to Care is brought to you by the Peggy Hill Team. Keeping it real all the way to sold. Reach out now at PeggyHill.com. It's Cool to Care with 107.5 Cool FM. This is what Barry's talking about from Barry 360. I'm Dan Blakely. The Barry Colts won two of three games last weekend. The wins coming at home. The loss, as has been the case many times this season, came on the road. Barry 360's Will Conkin looks back at the good and the bad of the last week with Colts broadcaster and writer Gene Pereira. What did you like from the group? That shootout win against the Generals. Uh, That was a thriller. Yeah, that was exciting. I mean, Thursday against the Old Sound, they were kind of thoroughly dominated in the first uh, period, yet they came out on top and... uh, you know, you got to tip your hat to Sam Hillbrand. He was outstanding in that first period and allowed Barry to kind of find its way in that second and third periods. Uh, Barry was really strong, came away with a 7-3 win there. Uh, and then Saturday night, obviously, the return of Captain Connor Punnett. And, uh, you know, you could see the players, obviously, before the game, talking to Connor on the ice. And, uh, you know, even the fans gave him a really good hand. They had a nice little video montage. Uh, to, to Connor uh, and his welcome and back and for Thomas Stewart as well uh, a chance with uh, facing his old Oshawa teammates but Billy got down in that one 2 nothing, and then again they battled back and uh, went into overtime then a shootout then Joe Glenn uh, an outstanding the lone goal the shootout uh, but you know a real nice win there and uh, Barry again had to go into the North Bay on the Sunday afternoon, which is always tough after that home Saturday night game. And, uh, uh, you know, they, they got it handed to him uh, 7-1 with North Bay. And, you know, Ben West actually played well in that one. It's hard to fault him. And, uh, but really what turned around that game quickly was uh, uh, North Bay scored uh, right at the end of the first period. They scored three goals within uh, a little more than three minutes uh, apart, and uh, that was the difference. We talked about him last week, uh, Riley Patterson. It seems like his confidence is uh, booming even more, and you're liking his offense. Yeah, you know, Riley's uh, he's moving up the uh, the draft rankings, and for good reason. I mean, he's really come alive here, and I think you can see the confidence in him that he's just kind of let his natural skills take over. And you know, one of the things that's impressive, obviously, is among the the top rookie scorers in the Ontario Hockey League, and uh, you know, his ability to put the puck in the net. We've seen that uh, with a great shot, but you're starting to see a lot more as well. Him setting up his teammates, and uh, you know that. Line of Ty York, Patterson, and Bowen, just great chemistry. But, you know, Riley Patterson has really kind of shown Barry fans that, you know, he came in with, uh, you know, high expectations of, of a player that dominated Tier 2 junior last year. And 
uh, you know, he's made the adjustment to the Ontario Hockey League, and he's really starting to take off here and, you know, proving that he can be a, a top-line guy. You mentioned off-air there. They're having some issues with depth and uh, and the line matching overall. Yeah, I think, you know, that's, you know, when you talk to Marty Williamson, you know, he points that out on the road, and you, you talk about the struggles on the road that, you know, just three wins away, they haven't won since on, the, on November 10th uh, away from Sadler Arena. And, you know, a lot of big part of that is obviously the home team has the last uh, line change. And they've been able to match up against these younger third and fourth lines, uh, you know, the depth, the so-called depth lines with Barry and, you know, get their top lines against them. And, uh, you know, Marty has said that he's trying to do things to kind of, get away from that but it's always tough on the road and uh, you know again uh, they got uh, a pattern here where they're in the midst of seven games in 12 days which is a very busy stretch and uh, you know you have to rely on the four lines and uh, you know on Thursday night against Owen Sound he was able to you know mainly go with his top three lines having Friday off but when you get in a busy in a stretch like this uh, you know you got to rely on the four lines you got to find a way uh, you know to to, to kind of get those lines, uh, you know, into your favor, uh, whether that's a quick change after the puck drop, you know, and so on to get a better uh, matchup. But, uh, you know, that's certainly going to be one of the things, the key on the six-game road swing here that they're in the middle of is, uh, is to, to, to be able to get that a better uh, a better match of lines for themselves and, uh, and get some important points on the road here. Like you said, the Colts have a stretch of uh, road games. Uh, not what you like to hear about being on the road, uh, but maybe they'll break out of that bad juju. Uh, it's uh, Flint on Friday, uh, Saginaw on Saturday, and Erie next Monday. And if you want to add it in to uh, Mississauga next Friday. All that being said, though, the Colts are still neck and neck with the Peets for that last playoff spot. Yeah, you know, and, and you look back and, uh, you know, both teams obviously uh, look at the future of the trade deadline, but... I think for Barry, you know, if they can get a few points here on the road and, and uh, you know, that should help them through. I mean, the Pete's have struggled. Uh, they're really struggling. Uh, they got a big win over London uh, the other night. But, uh, you know, again, I think for Barry, if they can get, you know, three or four points on the road here, uh, you know, and you think that's kind of, you know, minimal on a six-game stretch. But it's a tough stretch. But... You know, Marty Williamson talked about the fact that, you know, they're going to after, uh, they're going to head out on Friday to Flint. And, uh, you know, they're going to stay overnight, obviously, playing uh, in Michigan, uh, playing Saturday on Saturday. And then they're actually going to stay out on the road and head into Erie for Monday night's game, which is a makeup game in Erie. So it'll be time for the team to get some bonding as well, being together for a few days on the road and uh which might be a good thing for this young club a good test coming up for the club for sure thanks again gene thanks will special event coming up at the innisfil idea lab and library to celebrate creativity and imagination it's the library's first fundraiser barry 360's mj getting the details on guest speakers and events from idea labs katherine schutzen so what is this to raise funds for? Yeah, so we are raising funds for our library services and programs like above and beyond what we regularly do every day. So we're looking to raise funds for uh, more supports for um, some of our more popular programs like our seniors kits, which are our free craft kits for, for seniors, for some of our, our writing programs for young students and for more special guests and more special events. So one thing people may not know, I mean, they think like the Innisfil Ideal Lab and Library, it's not just a library. You guys do so much more. It's not just, I mean, books are great. We love our books, but you guys really, you're a community hub for a lot of things going on. So people that aren't familiar with the area, we got a lot of new people coming into this area. Uh, what is it that you guys offer? Yeah, um, we basically have something for everyone. And if you haven't stepped foot in a library in a long time, now's the time to, to come back in and, and check it out um, because it re really is, as you said a community hub right you're always going to find your books and access to information you need of course but you're also going to, going to find these amazing maker spaces where you can access technology that you wouldn't otherwise be able to like laser cutters and 3d printers we have media labs with green screens and recording studios for so if you've been itching to record your own podcast you know come get started at, at the library as well as you know 
meeting spaces for everybody and a ton of community services and programs for everyone of all ages. So, and that's also where this fundraiser is going to be able to fund some of these newer ideas and, and, and create them bigger and better. Anything specific you guys have your sights on to make bigger and better? One of the programs that has been um, growing and in popularity, and I mentioned it earlier, is this uh, Seniors Kits, um, which is a... We provide activity kits that are created in our hack lab, which is our maker space. Uh, so maybe things created on the laser cutter or some of the other tools that we have there that seniors are able to come and get for free and complete. And we really started this um, a few years ago when we were hearing that um, social isolation and um, you know mental health and disengagement from the community was a big issue. And... Um, we originally had grant funding to run this program and it's so popular. We're doing 150 to 200 kits a month um, with demand f for more. And so um, we want to be able to continue to support the, this program. So that's one really cool program that's happened. And um, another example is we run uh, movies in the park every summer for our community. There's um, no movie theater in Innisfil. And so every, every summer the library puts on fresh air flicks. Um, and so we can do more events like these and bring in more special guests and authors and all great stuff. So tell me about the event. You guys have a lot of guests that are going to be there. Yeah, we're really excited uh, about this. So the event is on February 29th, Leap Day. Um, and there's lots of great entertainment happening. So we're really excited that our keynote speaker is Elamine Abdel Mahmoud, who's a um, uh, author as well as the very charismatic host of CBC's Commotion. Um, and so he's a wonderful speaker. We're excited to have him. And we also have part of the event included with your ticket is a wine and book pairing where we ha you can do a wine tasting that complements a book and the authors of those books are going to be present as well. So you can get to engage with them and talk about maybe wine, maybe their, their books, their, their process, and it should be really exciting. And so we have three other authors that will be attending, which is Hannah Mary McKinnon, who writes thrillers, Farrah Heron reads, am writes amazing um, romantic comedies, and Taya Lim has this super cool um almost dystopian sci-fi sci uh, novel as well. And it's not just the authors as special guests as well. There's also going to be a live painting by some amazing local artists, Maria Kelebeev and Jeanette Lucchese, who will be painting during the event. And you'll have the opportunity to bid on those pieces um, and take them home with you at the end of the night, which is really exciting. And of course, we've got um, the wonderful local jazz trio, Jazz Mandu, performing as well as there will be other surprises and highlights from um, some of the cool things that are happening at the library. When is this uh, going to be happening exactly? Yeah, so it is on Thursday, February 29th and it runs from 7pm till till 10pm. Uh, you can buy tickets by heading to inisvillaidealab.ca slash spark. We've got a link there or you can drop into one of our branches. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having us. And that's our program for this week. Thanks to Ian, MJ, and Will for their input, to Matt Ladder for his technical tweaking, and to you for listening. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to What Barry's Talking About, rate it, review it. You can also keep up with What Barry's Talking About on X at Barry360, on our website, barry360.com, and there's our daily Kickstart podcast available from any streaming service and on our website. I'm Dan Blakely. Hope you'll join us again next week.